Everybody, welcome back. Nice to see you again. We're in the front garden again this time. We're doing a bit of yard work, as you Americans might call it. But we went out shopping earlier today to an antiques centre or antiques quarter of Sheffield, it's called. And I found this. It's a half barrel. Um, it's old and it's knackered and it's dirty and it's horrible. But I thought that would make a perfect little mini pond. So, I'm going to start the process of converting that into some kind of, yeah, little aquatic oasis for my redhead, red cap oranda. And then that'll be the front garden, well, I'll show you the front garden. So we've got the other one we put in the other week up here, and then that's going to be a little pond. So I need to go and get some pond liner, because it won't work like that. Probably use a bit of old carpet or some filter floss or something like that to line it. Put some pond liner in it, gravel, I'm going to go for an old school under gravel filter because they do work no matter what you think. Uh, and then some kind of air pump to run that. Hmm, we'll see how we go on. So we've got two jobs to do. Good boss lady here is going to fold up the pond liner and stick that in while I rinse the gravel. So I've got, got some pea gravel which I'm going to use as the under gravel filter. Do you like a hammer to make some more noise? <laughs> <laughs> so, she's going to do the pond liner. So normally you'd put some kind of liner underneath a pond liner, but I don't think we're going to bother in this case because it's really quite thick stuff that we've got and it's only a very small pond. So, let's do that. So, 10mm pea gravel. I'm just going to pour some in this bucket and rinse it out. And if anybody knows of any tricks that can separate buckets, because I don't think there's any power on earth that can remove these two, let me know, because I think these are destined to stay this way forever. Just keep tipping it out until it runs clear. That'll do. in the pond liner and just filling it with water just to make sure it all pulls down the same amount from each side and then we'll know how much we need to trim off and we can tidy it up that way. So like I said filtration is going to be an under gravel filter which consists of this which is your uplift tube you drop an air line down here the bubbles come up which then suck in the water from underneath this is attached to these panels like so do, 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 do. very old-fashioned way of doing it and then your gravel or whatever your substrate is goes on top of this and then the water is drawn through the substrate and out that way so that's your filtration and you're using your substrate as your filter media what I'm also going to do and so these little things they just come apart and you add more and more and more and more until you get the size that you need and what I'm also going to do is take some of the sponges from the fish room and give them a good squeeze into the, the pond to get it started and give it a bit of a kickstart. So we'll add these in. So put the filter in. And then just start piling the gravel in. So for now we're going to be using battery bank and a USB driven air pump but we might change that for a more powerful one depending on how it looks um, but basically you just drop this down the down tube which you can cut to size and change it as you as you feel and then connect that to the other end of the air line and then connect it to some power So it's a bit pathetic, but we'll get a more powerful pump, but that'll do for now. 
and we've got some plants to stick in as well so let's get them in. I'm just going to stick in some pond weed for now and a water lily which is Paul Harriet. Just stick them in. So this is who's going to be the first inhabitant of the new pond. He's been doing an awesome job in here on Duckweed Watch. So he's cleared out one, two, three tanks so far. But I think it's time he deserves a break and gets to spread his flippers a little bit. So we'll put him out, see how he gets on, see how he likes it. That little air pump, that just wasn't cutting it and it's not going to be a long term solution. So I went on Amazon and ordered myself a solar air pump and it's here. So let's get that open. So there we go, that's the solar panel installed, that's the solar panel there and it runs a line back round to a little air pump which is behind here which then feeds into there. It's pretty good, well when the sun's out anyway it's pretty good. Uh, obviously I've cut down the, the uplift pipe a little bit just so as it's under the water, just so as you can see it and that looks pretty good to me. Even when it's quite dull, it still kicks out a few bubbles. But I'll just I'll show you the pump here. That's the pump I've just stuck around there for now. It's, it's weatherproof, so it should last okay. It's not waterproof, but it's weatherproof. But underneath that bench, that should be okay. Um, so I'll better playing around to see what the ideal position for this is, but I think that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is give it a quick squeeze of some old dirty sponge filters in there to help seed it. And we'll put old redhead, red cap aranda in there. So to help with the seeding of the under gravel filter, I'm going to take a couple of these sponge filters that have been running for a while, that I've got in all these tanks, and squeeze them into a bucket, something like that, and pour it in. Uh, like a tiny bit of horrible dirty water, but it's full of good bacteria and it'll get that filter going. And then we'll take this little guy and we'll move him into the pond, same as you would with any other fish, um, or that I would with any other fish. I'm going to put him in a little bag and we float him on top of the water because even though these tanks aren't heated, they will be warmer than that tank is out there, which has been out there for a couple of days now, so it's kind of at the temperature it's going to be. Leave him out there for 20 minutes, half an hour, and then just put him in and he should be happy as Larry. Well, hope so anyway, so we'll get on with that. Yum. There we go. Getting ready for his new home. Turn round this camera. So we'll float him in there for about 20 minutes. You'll see that the the solar power air stone isn't really doing anything at the moment because it's just started raining and there's not really any sun. It is meant to, once it's been running for a while, it is meant to have a bit of a battery backup so as it will handle the dark periods. Um, but for now, it's fine. We'll be keeping an eye on the water parameters for a while anyway. So like I say, we'll leave them in there for 20 minutes and then drop them in and see how it gets on. So, let's get them in. It's going to be as simple as cutting the bag and pouring them in. Nothing more drastic. So the pond itself is this half barrel that I said I found in an antique shop. It's, I think it's roughly kind of 35 gallons or 150, 160 litres, something like that. Maybe a bit less because it's not quite filled to the brim. Or if you're Canadian, a thousand gallons. I had planned for this just to be a summer project um, and take them back in in the winter because fancy goldfish usually don't do very well at the lower end of the temperature scale. But I've been talking to a few people recently who have successfully kept fancies out in their pond in the UK uh, year round. I suspect that's because they've got bigger ponds than this and this will probably freeze solid if we get a bad winter so this is very much going to be a winter project I think. So we've got the pond weed down there and the lilies and a few of the floating plants I've stuck in. Um, 
an old pot in there just in case any of the local cats get interested. He's got somewhere to hide so he can hide in amongst the plants or in amongst the weeds or he can go behind the pot. Um, but yeah, he's doing pretty well so far. As you can see now that the sun's coming out, the filter's starting to go again. <laughs> it's very strange. So if I stand back and don't cover it. So if that's the that's the solar panel there. When the sun's out, the filter's pretty good. But if I put just even the camera shadow in front of it, it instantly kills it pretty much. So like I said before, it's got a battery in it that's meant to charge up, but this is the first day I'm using it, so it's just not quite got there yet. But yeah, he's doing pretty well. So he's only just been in there, he's just been a bit inquisitive, checking things out. But I think that's pretty cool. So let me know what you think. Well, it's quite good in there and hopefully this will just be a nice addition to the garden so let me know what you think in the comments and as always click like if you liked it dislike if you didn't and give me a subscribe i always like them bye